good morning students so today we are going to discuss the normalizing process which is a very famous heat treatment process with which we can change the properties of the material so what is exactly the normalizing process that is the normalizing heat treatment and what are the salient features and where we are adopting so all these things we are going to discuss in this session now let me discuss what is the normalizing process and in this heat treatment up to what temperature you have to heat and up to what environment so that means in which environment we are giving the cooling so these two are very very important in any heat treatment process that means up to what temperature whether it is above critical temperature or below critical temperatures that is very very important in any heat treatment process here so here if you say what is exactly the normalizing process this normalizing process whatever this process that we are saying here it involves the heating the material to an elevated temperature that is very very important elevated temperature elevated temperature means i will give the elevated temperature like in the image also elevated temperature that is above critical temperature and then allowing it to cool back to the room temperature so these are the two things that we are adopting in normalizing process here and by exposing it to room temperature a that is the whatever the material that you have taken that room temperature a if you adopted so that means after heating is completed then that means heating and slow cooling rates so whatever the procedure that we are adopting because of this alters the microstructure of the metal which in turn reduces its hardness and increases its ductility so this is the main intention of the normalizing even though the hardness that means the strength of the material reduces a little bit but the main property that means what are the property required for molding any material has to be molded depends on our requirement any material has to be forged depends on our requirement so for that molding purpose for that forging purpose for that extrusion purpose the main property required is ductility so this ductility the increase of this ductility property can be adopted by utilizing normalizing process that is the main advantage of this heat treatment process after process or after the material is completed in this normalizing what is exactly that we are adopting here so let me discuss in detail here what is the normalizing in heat treatment normalizing means here in this heat treatment we are adopting the process which is very very important the process that we have taken is it is a heated steel above the critical temperature holding for a period of time and that is until the transformation to occur and then we are adopting air cool and this normalizing steel what that whatever we are saying here the forgings are typically heated to a temperature so that means here up to what temperature we are heating so we are heating so that it will convert that means the temperature is, we can say that it is the austenizing temperatures that means the structure that we are going to form is a austenitic until the material transfer to austenitic we have to hold the material for a particular time that means so that atomic mobility that enhances the homogenization of the steel so this is called as a normalizing and this normalizing process that means uh, whatever the material that we have taken for this uh, type of heat treatment we have to keep for a time for a particular period of time at this temperature usually it is around 1600 degree for heat to 1750 degree for this is the temperature that we are adopting to give this heat treatment that is a normalizing heat treatment and we can see in the image also this is the image you can see this is the range of hypoeutectoid steel 0 to 0.83 percent carbon so this is the hypoeutectoid steel and this is a hyperuetectoid steel so this is the range of 0.83 to 2 percent so in this range if you see the lines that we are observing here that is in this is the these are the lines in iron iron carbon diagram or in any phase diagram so you can see these type of lines and this line is represented as a lower critical temperature line and this line is represented as upper critical this is another upper critical temperature line in the range of hyperuetectoid steel now 
the normalizing process that means what do you mean by normalizing here and what we are doing here suppose if you take uh, hypoeutectoid steel so you, after it reaches this upper critical temperature you have to heat at least some degree centigrade above suppose this is the 1600 you have to heat 1650 degree centigrade suppose if it is a 1333 for 0.83% carbon steel that means for this alloy for this eutectoid alloy that means eutectoid steel for this you can say 1333 plus 50 so that is the temperature that we have to adapt for the 0.83 percentage of uh, steel so that means for different alloys uh, the temperature varies but for all alloys the range is above upper critical temperature line after the material that means first of all you are heating the material when you heat the material when it reaches this region that is upper critical temperature line so take 50 degree centigrade so that means 50 degree above that temperature so after it reaches 50 degree above uh, say that range so this is the range here 1600 to 7 degree that is 1750 degree part this is the range that we are adopting for normalizing and here if you take the main features here the normalize whatever we are saying uh, here it is the annealing process applied to ferrous alloys and to give the material uniform fine grained structures so because of this normalizing see when already adapt that is when already the normalizing is available or the annealing is available or any other heat treatment is available while we are going for another heat treatment process suppose if you take the normalizing if annealing is doing its best why we are adopting normalizing heat treatment see this sentence here because of this normalization the annealing process whatever the annealing process that we have taken so because of that coarse grain structures may be formed so to avoid coarse grain structures that is the bigger grain structures so for adapting or by adapting normalization we will get the fine grained structure so to avoid excess softening of the steel here so that is the main advantage of normalizing of steel here so it involves heating the steel here it is uh, what are the things we are saying that it involves the heating the steel to 20 degree to 50 degree centigrade above its critical temperature and it soak for a period of time and it allows for a particular period and the main advantage the main material that we are taking what are the four chips that we are taking here held at that temperature so and this temperature is represented as a normalizing temperature see here this is the normalizing temperature for several hours until you get austenitic microstructure so that means you have to wait for a particular period of time so that the material whatever the forging material that you have taken it is going to be completely converted as a austenitic microstructure after then only you have to adapt the cooling procedure anyway you are going to adapt the cooling rate at what time so that means uh, what is the cooling rate so cooling rate must be very very slow until you get the required properties that means it depends the cooling rate depends uh, from material to material whatever the material that you have taken so the cooling rate depends on that particular material depending on the hardness that you have required so that means depending on the strength required by the material you can vary the cooling rate that is the main uh, advantage by adopting this normalizing technique and what are the final results that you are going to get because of uh, this normalizing process is the forging process that is the forging material that you have taken that will machine more easily with less movement when we get this type of property that means a machine more easily that means a machinability increases if for any material if the machine will be increases so we can do lot of process on the surface of the material which is very very important which are necessary process in all the materials that we are using in industry so that's why this normalizing increases the machinability characteristic for a particular material that is the main advantage of this normalizing that's why we are adapting even though the annealing is available and after annealing this normalizing the process that we are adapting so up uh, here we have seen the temperature the temperature range is very very important in normalizing here the temperature is uh, whatever the process that we are taking is it refines the 
crystal structure and produces more uniform and desired grain size distribution. What about the grain size? That means it mainly affects the grain, desired grain size. That means it depends on the requirement, you can change the grain size. And the main normalizing temperature that we have taken here, if you take in degree centigrade, it is around 800 or 850 degree centigrade to 980 degree centigrade. And in terms of degree per head is the range. In between, the lot of temperatures are available, 1500 degree for heat to 1800 degree for heat. So this is the range of normalizing. So it depends on the steel involved, whether it is a, if it is a hypoelectric steel, we have to take the less temperature. If it is a hyper, so you have to take, that means hyper eutectoid steel, you have to take in a different temperature, that means a higher temperature, which is closer to 1800 degree for heat. Depends on the steel that you have taken, you can go here. So this is the hypo eutectoid steel range and this is the hyper eutectoid steel. So it depends on this steel, so you can adapt the temperature range here. So if you take in degree centigrade, this is the range. Anyway, for upper critical, after it reaches the upper critical, maintain 25 degree to 50 degree here. So that is the main uh, technique that we are following in normalizing of uh, the steel. And if you observe this uh, particular graph, that is the stress versus strain, that is the normal stress versus uh, strain. If you observe the quenching here, the stress will be more. The stress will be more and quench and tempered. If you are after quench and tempered, so compared to normalizing process, compared to annealing process, uh, due to quenching, the stress is more here. The stress is more as well as the strain also more when compared to normalizing process. If you compare the normalizing with the annealing process, the stress versus strain, the normalizing stress and the normalizing strain is a little bit more compared to annealing. So that is the main property that you can see the changes and the comparison between the various heat treatment processes, the annealing and normalizing and pinching and tempering here. And you can observe here, uh, what is happened if the carbon percentage increases? Uh, see, this graph clearly shows what happens. Suppose if you take the annealing process, so that means here if the material increases, the carbon percentages, the annealing is going to decrease here. That means the elongation capability of the annealing decreases if the carbon percentage increases. The same for normalizing. If you adapt the normalizing here, you can see process here, the elongation process. Here also it decreases, but when compared to annealing, normalizing is a little less here. So that is the main difference uh, when compared with elongation versus carbon percentage. So compared to the other heat treatment process, normalizing is a best process and a lot of changes. We can see the main change in normalizing heat treatment process. If you observe the change here, see here the coarse lamellar plate, both are pearlite only. So this is also pearlite structure, this is also pearlite structure. But the main change is here, the coarse grain structure that we are going to adapt in annealing process. And if you adapt normalizing heat treatment process, we can get this type of heat, that is a pearlite structure. And this, Pearlite structure we can see under microstructure and uh, you can see what is the main difference and what is the advantage if you get the fine grained structures. This is the fine grained pearlite structure. This is the coarse grained pearlite structure. And automatically we can say the ductile property, the ductility increases due to the grain, the refinement of grains. We can say that refinement of grains that can be adopted by normalizing. And you can see that uh, this is the uh, in between ferrite and cementites are available. And anyway, uh, some hardness is also available in a needle structure or normalizing structure. But the main change, main property changes is ductility. So this is the main advantage and the machinability also increases uh, due to this uh, fine grained microstructures. The, uh, these are the main advantages of uh, normalizing. So that's why we are adopting normalizing for the steel cell. This is all about uh, normalizing heat treatment process and uh, all these salient features will help you in understanding normalizing heat treatment process. So, so this is all about uh, normalizing heat treatment. So I hope you have understood. Thank you.
Thank you, one and all.